Hello everyone, welcome back to the Stephen Macarbo's channel. During the previous video I explained how the electronic distributor works. Today's video is going to be a follow up of that video and this is going to be about how the distributorless ignition works. If you've been watching the series, you know how the point started, then it went to the electronic distributor and now we have the distributorless ignition. So let's get this camera up close so you can see it better while I explain. Let's get started. Okay, so we have the camera up close now. You'll see normally a DIS abbreviation when it comes to distributorless ignition systems. I have a drawing of a general motor setup for a four cylinder engine. Other makes will be designed slightly different, but the concept is similar. And no different than the previous videos, I tried to choose the simplest setup so it's easier to understand because once you understand the concept, it doesn't matter how complicated it is, the principle remains the same. So let's go over the components real quick. This system has an ECM which stands for engine control module, engine control unit, still the same, it's just going to have a different name. You have the ignition switch, you have an ignition module, and sometimes you'll see it referred as ICU, which will stand for ignition control unit. You have two coils right here, you have the spark plugs, you have a knock sensor, you have a cam sensor, you have a camshaft reluctor wheel that is bolted to the front of the camshaft, you have a crank sensor, and you have a crankshaft reluctor wheel that is going to be attached to the crankshaft. So these are the parts involved. Now let's go over the operation. If you remember how it all got started with the points, the ignition coil, which it was only one, there were not two, needed to have an on and off signal and that was provided by the point system. Then when it moved to the electronic distributor, that was provided by a pickup coil. Now this is more advanced and more efficient. How it all starts is with the crank sensor. The reluctor wheel normally is going to have a wider tooth for the number one cylinder when it's in top dead center. That way the computer will know as the crankshaft rotates when the number one cylinder is in top dead center. Earlier setups on certain makes only had a crankshaft sensor. But as the systems evolved and they became more efficient, they incorporated the cam sensor. Because now the computer has two reference signals. You have the crank sensor, you have the cam sensor. On certain makes, there will be several teeth on the reluctor wheel. On some of them, there will be only the number of cylinders. So like here, you have a four cylinder, so there will be one, two, three, and four instead of all of these. So depending on how they design it, it's going to vary, but the computer will receive the signal of the rotation of the camshaft. And together with the signal from the camshaft sensor, the computer will know when to send the current to each spark plug. Now as you can tell this system still has an ignition control module. Some makes got away with the ignition control module and everything is controlled by the ECM. Same thing, different makes are going to design vehicles different. The principle is the same. This one has a module so let's take a look. So the power is going to go to the module to the computer when you turn the key on. Obviously the module is going to be grounded independently and is connected to the computer. Then you have the signal from the cam sensor and crank sensor that combined with the computer is going to send the high voltage to each spark plug. Now when you see two coils and four spark plugs, a system uses what is called the wasted spark method. The reason why that is, if you notice, each coil is going to be shared with two cylinders that are in top dead center at the same time. However, like on this example, number one is going to be on top dead center compression stroke but number four, which is at the very opposite end of the engine, right here, is going to be on the exhaust stroke. And then the two cylinders that are in the center, they're two and three, one of them is going to be in compression stroke and the other one is going to be in the exhaust stroke also. The coil is going to fire at the same time, so on the one that is in compression stroke, it's going to ignite the mixture. However, but on the number four, the fuel mixture has sort already of been burned, it's on its way out of the engine already. So that's why they call it the wasted spark system. Now if you notice this system incorporated a knock sensor. So what does the knock sensor do? The knock sensor is going to send a signal to the ECM every time the engine is pinging, it's knocking so to speak due to pre-ignition. And at that point the computer is going to retard the timing. On previous systems that have distributors, you could adjust the timing by rotating it either on the retarded or advance to compensate for the ignition advance. This system right here there's nothing to adjust. So it's all been programmed into the ECM. 
and when an engine will tend to knock or ping is going to be either when you have the incorrect octane fuel the engine is under a heavy load, maybe uphill you're towing maybe you've done modifications to the engine that increase the compression and same thing under heavy loads it will tend to ping or detonate you could also have the incorrect spark plug heat range there's a lot of factors that could cause an engine to have pre-ignition and develop pinging or knock that can be captured by the knock sensor but like I said the ECM is going to compensate for that and adjust the timing another advantage that has a cam and crank sensor is that if for some reason a timing belt or a timing chain jumped that's going to generate a code indicating that the relationship in between these two is not what it should be and it's a good starting point to troubleshoot and that is just one of the advantages because if the engine develops a misfire let's say the spark plug got foul it will trigger a code and illuminate the check engine light so obviously the system is more efficient than the distributor and the fact that it has a self-diagnosis feature makes it easy to troubleshoot and find a problem when it develops so there you have it now you know how the distributor less ignition system works on my next video I'm going to explain how the coil unplug system works so stay tuned for that one thanks for watching see you next time